I have After Effects open here and I'm going to go ahead and import the images that I'm going to use for my infographic animation. I created files in Illustrator as well as Photoshop. So to import something into After Effects, you simply go to File, Import, File. Notice there's also a shortcut on the Mac, which is Command or Apple I. And in the PC world, you would use Control I. Okay, so I'm going to find the folder where I have my files inside it. And I simply select that and hit Open. Now, if I hit the folder to open, then it would also import the um, elements inside of that. I can do that and just kind of keep it organized the same way as it was before. So I'm going to do that. Okay, so notice now I have an assets folder and inside here I have a background that I created that's white, a background that's um, light blue, the iPhone graphic that I'm going to use, and I have my individual iPhones that I took the background off in Photoshop and shows the different um, faces of the iPhone. Okay, so now that I have everything imported here, I need to actually create a composition that will have the settings that I want and I can start placing the stuff. So to create a composition is very easy. You, you, one of the ways you can do is just simply go to this icon here on the bottom that looks like a film um, strip and you can create new composition. You can always right click as well and do new composition. So either way, I'm going to click on the icon and I'm going to type in, um, we're going to call this one infographic. And I'm going to have the settings for NTSC DV. So that's going to be my default settings. Notice in here, there's some available settings in the drop down menu where I can manually enter the size that I want. Uh, this is my frame rate here and the resolution. Uh, of this how it's going to be viewed so right now I'll keep it at full if I have to reduce the preview uh, resolution I can do that later and I'm going to also do the uh, start time code I'm going to keep it at zero but I'm going to change the duration to maybe 30 uh, seconds so the first one for some of you that might be new to uh, animation and video the first is the hour uh, minutes, seconds, and frames. Now here is where we can change the background color. I'm going to keep it at the default black, but notice you can do, uh, you can change the background color to anything that you like. Okay, I'm going to press OK. And notice that now I have an icon outside of the folder called infographics. If you had the folder open and maybe you were inside of here and create a new composition, the comp composition could have been placed inside the assets folder. You can always just hold and drag like you would do in any other software to take it outside the directory. All right, but <clears throat> I have this here. This is perfect. Notice on the bottom now it says infographic. Now the way I'm looking at my interface for After Effects is based out of what is called here the workspace standard. Now I can also change it. Let's say I'm doing a lot of effects. I can change this to FX. I can change this to paint when we're going to do some cool stuff uh, later on with uh, the paint tool. Uh, you can do text. And again, these are just presets that are available for you to use. If you want to go back to, let's say, uh, standard, you can just switch back there. And obviously, you can create your own workspace by moving your windows or panels around and hit a new workspace and you can save it. This is handy for anybody that has a dual monitor. All right, so now that I have infographics open, I'm gonna start placing some of the assets first. So in the beginning, how I created this, I was gonna have the iPhone 5, uh, I'm sorry, iPhone 1, the first edition, to just sort of pan across with some text that's gonna be fading in uh, as well as the background. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to hold and drag that iPhone 1 and place it on the timeline. 
It's as simple as that. So now you'll notice this is my canvas or my composition and this shows what I see when I render the file. So right now I'm at frame zero and if I go all the way to 30, it still has the same image. Now what I can do is I can actually reduce this a little bit because it's quite large. Now to reduce the size of something, you can open the properties of this object. To do so, simply click on this drop down arrow here, menu, and uh, notice that now I see transform. If I open this again, I see that I can change the anchor point of the object, which currently is right here in the center. I can change the position of the object. I can scale it, I can rotate it, and I can change the opacity. Now notice next to all the properties here, I see a little stopwatch. This is what is going to allow me to say that if I click on this stopwatch, now I can do animation. So I can start with frame zero being at a specific scale, and then towards the end, it scales up or down. Um, but we're going to get into that very quickly. Okay, so let's go ahead and now scale the whole object. So I want this to be smaller altogether. Now I could click and type in a number, let's say 50%, and that's great if you know the ratio, but if not, what you can do is you can go with your mouse right over the 50% um, text here and hold and drag to the left or to the right to just sort of resize it yourself visually. So let's say you like that, that's great. Now, another way you can also scale and move your objects, aside from opening the transform panel here this way, you can also hold and drag your object around. And you can also scale it like you would do in Photoshop. So if I hold the shift key, now I can change the proportion for this. Something like this. So that seems to be about just fine, maybe a little bit smaller. So I hold. Uh, first I grab a corner and then I hold the shift key so it stays within proportions and maybe reduce it just a bit, something like that. All right, so right now I call this iPhone 1 and that's okay, um, but if I did want to rename this, all I do is press return and then notice now I can edit the text that's inside there. Okay, so let's move on to the next thing. So that's the first object. Now, I have a background, if you guys remember, that is going to be fading in, in the about, uh, by the time it reaches like, let's see, about two or three seconds, it becomes brighter. And also notice the opacity of the phone fades out while the background comes in. All right, so we can do this very, very easily. I'm going to grab the background, the regular I want, <clears throat> excuse me, the regular I created one. And I'm going to drag it towards the bottom. And I'm going to fade this in. So um, again, I can use the arrow to open the panel. Or if I know that I want to change, for example, the opacity, I can press T, which is, I guess, for transparency, but it would open your opacity panel. And now I can see just that menu instead of having all the other ones available. Okay, so I'm gonna go to frame zero and I'm going to first activate the stopwatch here. So when I click on it once, notice that what happened now, I have a keyframe or, you know, which is defined by this little dot here, as well as with us in the timeline, I have a nice little um, dot that I use for uh, reference for all the keyframes that I create. And um, what I'm going to do is say, okay, when it starts here, uh, it's going to be at opacity, opacity zero. So it's gonna be completely transparent. But then when I get to about three seconds here, 
And uh, if I want to be at three seconds exactly, one of the things I can do is I can zoom in a little bit the timeline by holding and dragging this little dial. Or I can actually click on the current time indicator and I can type in three. And notice I can do also period, zero, zero. That's the same thing. And now it takes me right to uh, the three second mark. So I can say when I get to the three second mark exactly, I want to change this to 100%. So all I need to do is just type in 100. So I'm going to save this one demo video. There we go. And um, now if I use the current time indicated to go back and forth, I can see that now I created a fading effect. So very cool. All right, so now we're going to apply a very similar effect, but to the phone. So we're going to say it starts maybe at 100%, and when it gets to the three second mark, I'm going to take that down to maybe like 20%. So what I want to do is I'm going to close this menu so I keep it nice and neat. I'm going to lock it as well because I'm not using it now. And I'm going to go to phone one. And again, you can open your menus this way or press the T for just the opacity. Now, let's say you're somewhere over here and you want to go to frame zero. Another shortcut you can use is you can press in the, um, if you're using a um, keyboard, um, a desktop keyboard, you can press the home key and that will take you right to the beginning as well. All right, so um, I'm going to press the opacity time stopwatch right there. And I'm going to keep that at 100. And then I'm going to jump to my current time indicator here and put in three seconds. And in here, I'm going to change this to 20%. So notice it has a nice little fade out effect. Okay, so we're starting to get there. Um, that is how you can change the opacity uh, and other properties with the time uh, stopwatch as well, active.